All right, Aaron Weaver, thank you so much for coming on. I uh, I started watching your videos, I'd say about six months ago. And okay. I, I think I found you because of your post on one of the fishing pages, uh, Facebook, maybe Carolina Inshore Fishing. I'm not Pop, sure. Carolina Inshore probably, yep. Yeah, the, the thing that drew me in so much was uh, that you were a diehard fisherwoman, and it, and it wasn't coming from anywhere other than what seemed like the love of the game. So that is, that is yeah. why it's an yeah. honor to sit down and talk with you. So thank you so much for coming on. Well, I, I'm so glad that that came across in my videos because it's so true. Um, I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't absolutely love, absolutely love it. And uh, I'm excited to talk to you about it today and, and kind of how I got into it and, and all kinds of stuff. So I'm um, so glad you came across it and, and that you enjoy it. And I'm hoping to get more out there here soon. Yeah. Well, that leads me into the conversation of, uh, so how did you get into fishing? Uh, well, I moved to the Cape Fear area uh, 2013 from uh, Maryland, uh, Baltimore, D.C. area and Southern Maryland. And, you know, I never fished there, which is so strange because I, I wish that I did now. Now that I know, <laughs> I wish that I had been fishing for, you know, the last 20 years. Um, but, uh, but, um, I moved to Wilmington to kind of get out of the whole rat race up there in the Baltimore DC area, um, and moved to the beach and just had to get away from everything and fell in love with it. Um, and didn't really fish much when I was living in Wilmington. Uh, I was there from 2013 to 2020. Um, I was always busy working or, uh, you know, hanging out with friends, going to breweries, going to festivals, uh, that I never really got into fishing. I never really had anybody that, uh, introduced me to it. Uh, I never really caught like a good fish that, you know, you know, when you catch the first one that like really gets you and you're, you're literally hooked, you know? Um, so that hadn't happened for me yet at that point. Um, I had some kind of tough times in uh, 2019, 2020 with my health. And uh, I ended up selling my house in Wilmington uh, and just COVID summer happened and I didn't really know what I was gonna do. Um, I was not working uh, and I didn't have a plan of what I was really going to do. I found a, a house on Topsail Island for the summer uh, for three months because during the time they couldn't rent short-term rentals because of, uh, you know, it had to be 90 days or longer. So I was able to snag a good deal and I uh, got a, a house on Topsail for three months. And during that time, I caught my first red drum and uh, it was the best I had felt in a few years. Uh, I, I suffer from um, a couple uh, nervous system disorders that it's uh, developed just randomly over the last couple of years that have affected me professionally and physically and it, all across the board. Um, and once I started fishing, that kind of took away that the worries and the stress that I had been experiencing, uh, you know, because it takes so much focus. Y y when you are on the hunt, uh, and doing everything that you're doing, whether it be something menial and it's just, um, you know, trying to catch bait or looking for bait. When you're focused on those things, you're not focused on all of this noise in the background. And it became something that I, that I just fell in love with and I became addicted to that feeling because it was, it became like a medication for me. It took away my pain and my stress and, and it gave me joy. Um, and it gave me a self of self sense of confidence again, uh, that I had kind of lacked, um, you know, I was working as a full-time registered nurse, uh, and overnight that, that ended for me. And that takes away kind of part of your identity. Uh, but I've kind of gotten a new identity out of this, you know, uh, which I never would have anticipated ever. Uh, you know, if you asked me five years ago, where do you see yourself? And it would not be where I am today. Um, and, and that's okay. Uh, and it's great. And, and I'm excited about where I am now versus 
where I was two years ago versus where I was five years ago. Um, it, it has taught me that um, as a grown adult, you can find new hobbies and new things that you love and enjoy and um, that can change your life, really. Um, and that's kind of how I got into it. Uh, and I can't stop now. So, <laughs> Oh, well, you sound hooked. If you know, the, the last sentence of I can't yeah. stop now is, is usually yeah. the, the telltale. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I only did the YouTube thing really because I was, you know, posting some of my catches on some of the local Facebook groups, um, top and fishing. And I remember, you know, a, a woman reaching out and say, you should start a YouTube channel. And I was like, you know, maybe, maybe I'll think about that and sort of playing around with a GoPro and then looked into, um, you know, kayaks and other modalities of how I can get on the water and just kind of started building from there and thought, this is something that I can try. I, I you know, I, I was kind of lost in my path and I was looking for something and it seemed like a, a fun, Thing to try that I already knew that I loved the fishing aspect and that I was fishing you know by myself so when I have a camera and I'm talking to people it's almost like you're not fishing by yourself you know mm. you're you're fishing with friends or uh you know you're fishing with your family you know my family lives in Denver and in Mexico and so they can see me and in a way I'm kind of fishing with them like oh my goodness look at this this is just so crazy and awesome and it's fun to share it you know because when you're out on a boat and you have like an amazing catch and you just be like oh my god did anybody else see see that you know because yeah. it's just it, it's so much joy that you want to share it with someone else I guess well I, I want to jump back to uh I believe you said it was 2019 that you found out you had some health issues that were going to change your course mm -hmm. of your life. So from that point on, you know, you're working full time as a nurse, you've worked so hard to get to where you are. What was the immediate feeling that, okay, I got to take a step back and think about what's next for me? Oh, gosh, you know, it was more of um, it, it was a very long process, because uh, there are probably people that are listening to this or watching this now that either suffer from a chronic illness that took a long time to be to get diagnosed, or they're suffering from some kind of unknown or, or, or undiagnosed uh, pain or problem, and their doctors can't figure out what's wrong with them. Um, that that is where I was, and so that's all I really had to focus on was. Um, I was going from one specialist to another specialist to another specialist, and it was just living one day at a time, really. What's the next step? Where do I go next? How am I going to get through the next day? Um, and trying to not think out too far, because at that point, it's so overwhelming that if you do that, it, uh, it makes it harder to focus on, okay, let's just get through today. And, and then you just learn how to do that until things start getting better. Um, and eventually that does, it's, you know, especially if you have a good support system, you know, thank goodness I have wonderful friends and family that um, have been, you know, with me through this and been able to support me in, so, in many different ways. Uh, and that was really helpful. Um, but yeah, it was just a kind of a loss, loss of, sense of accomplishment, you know, you do. I worked so hard through school and you work so hard professionally to get ahead and to prove yourself and to feel like you're doing a good job. And then it goes, goes like that whole element of your life is gone now. You know? Yeah. I, I think that speaks to your sense of drive to be able to uh, deviate from what has been the plan for probably 10 years at that point, you know, ever since going to college and then you've, you're in your career, yeah. you're, you're doing great all of a sudden, whoa, okay, I have to, I got to put this somewhere else now. So that, that is the impressive yep. side yep. of it to me that you were able to refocus that energy into something like fishing. Yeah. 
well, I've got, I've gotten so lucky. Like I feel so lucky um, because even though things went bad for me, things have gone right in so many ways for me as well that I feel grateful um, that I live near the ocean, that, that I wasn't still living in Baltimore when this happened to me, you know, because, you know, when you're living in an, in an environment that is depressing, I'm sorry, but Baltimore city, you know, unless you've got millions of dollars, you know, you're going, it's a depressing environment. Um, but you know, I am so lucky that I'm able to our city almost, you know, almost daily, uh, you know, walk my dog down at the beach and watch the sunrise and, and how lucky I am that I have that, uh, to, to help me through and just all the wonderful people here too. Um, so encouraging and helpful. Oh my goodness. The, the, this fishing community at Topsail has been so cool. Um, going from like, not like losing, you know, when you, when you lose your community, you know, they're your, you know, your coworkers, especially when you're working full time in a, in, in any kind of job, you hang out with your coworkers, you know, they can be your friends and then you lose that. And then you're losing your friends and you're like, you do, you don't know, um, who you can really talk to because then you're losing those common interests, et cetera. So I found like a whole new community here. Um, in the topsail area. And it's so wonderful to like um, see people that I know and say hello. And then people that uh, may recognize me from YouTube and they say, oh my goodness, we, we recognize, you. you know, I'll be in the tackle shop and say hi or, and it's so flattering. It's so cool that they, they, uh, they're like, we've watched your videos. And there was one woman I met recently when I was in East Coast Sports uh, helping out in the evening. And uh, she was coming in and getting some fiddler crabs. I think her name was uh, Lori. I got your name wrong. I'm sorry. Uh, but she's like, uh, you know, she realized that I was who I was. I guess she didn't recognize me because, because I had my hair down and no sunglasses. So I looked different. I guess I don't. My uniform is like my hair up, visor and sunglasses. So she didn't recognize me. Um, but she said, I got my kayak because of you and I just love it. And she is excited about going out and red drum fishing. And I'm just so cool. Like that. How cool is that? That that I was able to uh, inspire somebody to 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 buy a kayak and get out there and just do it. You know, it, it, it takes some guts to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it takes some guts to, to, to invest the money and take the time out to, to know that you're going to fail a, a lot mm -hmm. when you start. Transition into COVID summer and uh, you've caught your first fish. You're like, okay, yeah. I'm considering getting a kayak. How did that transition go? Um, well, the next summer, um, my boyfriend was back at work because his, he was taken back on at work, you know, after the layoffs lifted and I was going to be landlocked, uh, you know, during the weekdays and I didn't know what I was going to do, <laughs> you know, cause I, because I got so hooked on it the previous year that I, I had decided that I was going to figure out a, some way where I was going to become independent on the water. Um, and I didn't know how that was going to work out because I really didn't have any money <laughs> at the time. And, but I knew that I had to figure out a way. Um, and so I just looked, started looking into some options. I was watching, you know, some, some kayak fishing on, on YouTube, uh, and saw that, you know, people have a lot of fun doing it. And I, and I, and I saw that it was possible, especially when I found the pedal kayaking. Uh, kayaking because my problem is with my uh, shoulder and my right arm so like I could not paddle if I had you know I sometimes I'll use my paddle kind of like a sup if I need to kind of get over like a really shallow spot um, but I don't ever uh, paddle to go a distance but once I realized that there's pedal drive kayaks I was like ooh, that's what I need to do <laughs> uh, so I you know on a on a whim and a prayer um, drove up to Eastern Outfitters here, uh, um, in Hampstead, March, 2021, I guess. And they had two and I knew that they were not going to be in stock very long. So mm -hmm. I put the deposit down on one and just said, I will figure it, I'll figure it out, you know? Um, and, 
because I, I was using some savings was the issue, I, you know. So I had some money in savings, but I had no no money coming in, um, and so I didn't and I didn't know when I was going to have any money coming in. So it was a risk that I took in in, in buying it. Uh, but I'm so glad that I did, um, you know. And I also thought, well, if it doesn't work out and I don't like it or I can't do it physically, can't do it then uh, I'm sure I could sell it, you know, resell it. So I wasn't too worried about that. Um, but then I had to figure out how am I going to get it to the water uh, without having to lift the kayak because I can't, I can't lift it really at all. It's too heavy. Um, so I uh, picked up like a Harbor Freight trailer kit, built that out with some uh, wood and, and some old carpet. You know, for some old bolt boards, and have used that to trailer my kayak around and just put it in at the kayak ramp, so or at the boat ramp, not the kayak launch. Um, so I just go to the public public boat launches here and put in just like any boat would, um, and and it and I quickly realized that it was something that was possible for me, something that I loved and that. I especially loved that I could go wherever I wanted to go. I was no longer the first mate and and the captain's driving the boat. I was now the captain, you know. So yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Ooh, that creek looks cool. I want to go in there," you know, and be okay with bumping on some oysters or, uh, you know, you can just explore so much more on a kayak than you can, uh, you know, on a, on any kind of boat. It be skiffs, yes, but. Uh, still, you know, a kayak, you, you can beat up a little bit more, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it was something that gave me freedom uh, because I was able to get out on the water and not be stuck. You know, something that I think about a lot when I'm here is that there are a lot of people that live around here that probably never go on the water, mm -hmm. never go on the water. And and that makes me sad because it's 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 such a good feeling to get out there, um, and I'm and I'm so appreciative that I have that ability to go and just do it on my own whenever I want. Not whenever I want. The weather dependent. Yeah. <laughs> weather dependent, which we all know about this summer. This uh, this past month has been a lot of strong southwest winds. So you you ain't telling yeah. nobody. It's been rough. Yeah. So you uh. It sounds to me that you have the exploratory soul where you just love to find the adventure in what you do. Mm -hmm. And how does that play into f other realms of fishing outside of just the kayak? Oh, um, well, you know, I feel like a lot of people have their fishing spots that they like to go to and they'll go, there are probably some dudes that have been fishing here for 20 years and they go to the same spot all the time, you know, surf fishing or whatever. Um, but what I've realized is like, <clears throat> I, there's 26 miles of island on Topsail Island and there's so many spots. And, you know, the other day, last week, so last week, so I guess you could say I started delving into the surf fishing and I've been doing that here and there uh, since last year but really kind of getting into it and trying to target other species or, or see what other species are out there and going at different times you know there it, it it changes so much in the surf I feel like depending on the time of day the tide the temperature um, the water temp I guess you could say that you know, if you sometimes you go at night, you're going to get sharks in one spot, and then you might at the same spot the next day at noon, you might get Spanish mackerel. And um, you know, the spot that you were fishing for a month, you know, nothing's happening there today, but you walk up 200 yards on the other side of the pier and you catch Spanish mackerel for the first time ever because you tried something different, you know, yeah. which. It, I did last week, you know, I'd never caught Spanish mackerel before because generally people catch them on plugs, you know, gotch plugs um, or different rigs and I usually use bottom rigs. Uh, but that day, you know, I just moved to a different spot that was kind of more of a trench and less of a 
bowl, I guess you could say, in the surf, um, for those that, you know, read the surf, which that took, it's, I still can't figure that out, it, depending mm -hmm. on, you know, it was tough today. But, um, yeah, just kind of finding, discovering that you can go to new places anytime and it's going to be different. Um, or you can go at a different time of day and it's going to be different. And just trying new things and you'll learn new things from that. Because if you're doing the same thing all the time, you're going to keep getting the same result and you might never catch this one, you know, species. You know, if you're only fishing with six all hooks and big mullet, you're not going to catch a sheep's head. You know? Um, trying, just trying new things and, and learning all of the different little, little changes that you can make uh, to help you catch more fish. Um, the, and, and that, you know, there's kind of a science to fishing and there's kind of an art to fishing. But you know what I was thinking the other day is like, I wish that like uh, Elon Musk would come up with like the Neuralink for, for fish so that we could read their minds and know yeah. why they do what they do. Because you can read all you want about fishing and then you could come up with a plan and be like, oh, I know on this night I'm absolutely going to hit it hard on whatever because that's what the you know the lunar stuff says and the, it's going to be you know perfect winds and then you get skunked <laughs> you know yeah um so i guess just it's taught me to just try new things all the time because you'll be surprised and and excited by all the different stuff there is to discover i guess um, just in where you live, little, little, little area, my little bubble of topsoil. Yeah, you live in a great area. You oh, live, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some yeah. of the best fishing around is topsoil area. So you are in the Mecca. I haven't fished, I haven't fished really outside of topsoil. Uh, I haven't. I've fished Wrightsville like twice, but that was when I first moved here in 2013. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I haven't really... Well, my trip, my kayak trailer is like a rust bucket, so I am I would be so nervous. It's not supposed yeah. to go in any kind of water, and I'm putting it in salt water, you know. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna have to need a, a get a new trailer before I go traveling more than ten miles. I think. Well, that that leads me to the next question of you have uh, grown so much in a year, and. Clearly, that is going to lead you into, okay, well, this is going well. I really love this. This is good for my mental health. And, and it, I, yeah. I recognize that as well. But what you have a feeling of what is next. Uh, so what are yeah. some of the things that you think that you want to do with with the fishing and, and your growth and where you want to see yourself in five yeah. years? Um, that's interesting because that's something that I've been thinking about now that I have kind of been crawling my way out of, you know, a, a hard time, uh, is how can I turn this into a uh, long term? Because I'm realistic in the fact that I, I'm, I, am I going to be fishing in a bikini and on a kayak for 10 years or in 10 years? I don't know. Um, so I, I'm thinking about uh, how I can turn this into something that benefits other people as well. Um, and I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm not making much money off <laughs> this at all. You know, it's not like it's a career for me. It's just something that has been so helpful for me to, uh, to boost myself, my self esteem. Um, and I'm hoping that I can turn it into a career. Um, you know, one thing that I have noticed being a female angler is that it's hard to find, uh, apparel that is, comfortable that it, comfortable and it's utilitarian you know it's not just to be cute and or it's cute but it doesn't function well when you're actually trying to fish um, so I've been thinking about you know is there something that I can do uh, in that realm uh, to help other you know lady anglers I'm I'm an artist as well um, so you know I have some design ideas in my head that maybe I could come up with something uh, but that's something that, you know, I'll, I'll deal with that maybe when it's, uh, February and there's no fish out. <laughs> <laughs>
you know yeah, i've point. also i've also thought about and i know there are a lot of organizations in which um you know especially like you commented about how how fishing is good for the mental health um that that fishing is used for pe people with ptsd especially in the veteran community i believe that there's a lot of camaraderie around that and 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 i that's something that i would like to bring over into other disabilities you know people that you know and they might not be men and I, that's something that also i'm trying to encourage you know women like that that you can do this you know i i am a female and i have a problem with my strength in my arm and i can still figure it out you know that that you can can do this and it can help you get through whatever you're getting through so i'd like to try to figure out maybe if there's a way that um you know i could maybe turn this into some kind of advocacy or you know working with partnering up anglers with with people that that need help and and would like to go out and just go go fishing and just learn a couple of things and maybe get lucky enough to catch fish when they're out but just to try something new and see if it's something that might help them yeah i think that's great and uh one of the reasons why i wanted to talk to you was because you see a lot of uh females in the outdoor industry and it doesn't have that sense of doing it for the right reasons. And I think that, mm -hmm. I think that you genuinely love it and you do a fantastic job of displaying that love of the outdoors. And the fact that you're a female is just happenstance. And that, that's <laughs> what I love about watching your videos and why I think you're going to have a successful career in this because you're going to be someone that young girls can look up to and, and see themselves in you and that, okay, I don't have to show my body off to get clapped. Right. So right. that, that is, well, uh, thank uh, you for recognizing that. yeah, that that's the, uh, I mean, we got, we, we need more of that in this world. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, I, um, and I've watched a lot of different, uh, lady anglers on YouTube and I, there have, I've seen the kind of the difference in those, you know, there's, you know, Dar Sizzle is somebody that I really look up to. Um, Dar mm -hmm. Sizzle and Puddin, I love their videos. You could tell she loves what she's doing, and you can tell that you know she doesn't seem like she's kind of you know trying to really put on a show or anything like that. But then you see some others that you know it seems like it it is not for the right. It's not for the love of the game. You know, it's just a modality in a way to make an Instagram post, you know, which to me, it's like, mm. like, even now, like, I need to post on Instagram more, like, it's bad. I, <laughs> I, I feel like I've kind of, kind of pulled back a little bit in that. But I recognize that I need to, to do more of that more interaction. Um, but it's also like, you don't want to be like, I'm showing off, you know, it's, um, mm -hmm. I've kind of, as I've gotten older, I've definitely kind of pulled back from that kind of stuff. And so that's made me a little more reluctant to do that, you know, post stuff on Instagram because you recognize how, 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 how social media can be, you know, if you're a, a young girl who is uncomfortable with their body or uncomfortable with them, their self-esteem and then you know they're seeing pictures of these females that might be photoshopped you know and their bodies are photoshopped or they just look like an unrealistic expectation of what a female body looks like um that that that's not good for girls i'm so glad that i did not grow up as a young girl having to see that online every day uh, I know that would have affected me. And so I want to make sure that I am putting, like, I'm trying to put forward a, a positive image um, that, you know, if I have a daughter and they look at my stuff, you know, in 10, 15 years or whatever, that they that they would not be like, oh, my God, Mom, you know. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, that's cool, you know. So Yeah. Well, that's the, the best way to look at it, uh, just to – think about the what if you know what if I have a little girl what would I want her doing what I'm doing that's a perfect way to look at it right I probably should what watch would, my life 
a little bit more on my videos. But that's just something that I'm all, I'm a Yankee. <laughs> um, people probably won't like to hear that either, but I am. <laughs> I'm originally born in Pennsylvania, grew up, you know, spent a lot of time in Baltimore um, and Southern Maryland. And um, yeah, it's something that I, I should watch because it is in my videos, but it's just, it's also a part of me. And that's something that I want to make sure that I'm not editing out aspects of of me because it'll please other people or yeah I guess I want to make sure that I'm rep accurately representing myself in my videos mm -hmm. and not being a different person than I am in normal life yeah. I, you know, I'm just literally I'm fishing as I normally would if I didn't have a camera but I'm just talking to the camera and that's the only difference um, so that's really cool. Well, I, I appreciate that you do that. And, and being authentic is the only way to go in, in today's world because people can recognize pretty easily if you are being the person that you, you know, portray and all it yeah. takes is a 30 minute video for someone to be like, yes or no. You know, you get one yeah. opportunity to make that impression with people. So yeah, yeah that, that's a, yeah. that's important to touch on. Well, uh, I want to, I want to end with, uh, what advice would you give someone that is thinking about taking a chance and getting into an activity that they have no experience with, but it, it, it calls them per se that it gives them that feeling yeah. that, yeah, I want to do this. What's your best advice? I would say to reach out to someone uh, that is doing the same thing that you want to do and talk to them and ask them about the realities of it. Um, because that's one thing is a, another thing on YouTube is people don't always post the realities of everything, you know, stepping on oyster shells and uh, spending a bunch of money. The amount of money that you spend on fishing gear is insane. It's crazy how much fishing gear costs. Yeah, but, you're right. But talk, yeah, talking to somebody that's doing it. That's what I did. I reached out to a couple people that I had seen on YouTube and I came across their Instagrams and they were kind of local and I just reached out and said, Hey, I'm thinking about getting into this. What could you tell me about it? And, and, and then, you know, if it's something that's possible, rent a kayak, you know, unfortunately in our area, there aren't, um, I guess you could go to Pogies up in Moorhead city to rent fish, like pedal drive kayaks. But, um, yeah, tr try to rent one or, or, or mm -hmm. see if you could do, you know, try this activity without having to commit a lot of money financially <laughs> right up, right off the top. Um, but absolutely talk to somebody. Don't just think I can't, that's, that's too hard or I can't do that. Um, think about what, you know, what's, what's the worst thing that can happen if you try it? You know, what do you have to lose? And, and if what you don't have to lose is not that much and what you would lose is like not discovering the new thing that might change your life, you know, that's, it's so worth it to spend $400 or whatever to go and, and, and try something that literally might change the course of your life, especially if your life feels like it's missing something. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point is, uh, just keep seeking and keep trying things until something sticks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, key, yes. If you're feeling like there's something missing, then try fishing. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, there's water everywhere. You know, most places there's water. And uh, it, I think it's uh, one of those things that people are, it's messy or, uh, you know, I don't have the stuff. But you really don't, you don't have to spend that much money on a fishing gear, especially if you're just like, I think freshwater fishing and you can just get, you know, a, a rod and, and some, some gulp baits or, or, mm -hmm. you know, if you learn salt water, I mean, let's be real. We lose yeah. some tackle and I mean, gosh, I lost a Sputnik weight last week. That's six bucks in one, you know, shark took my, took my Sputnik and it's just, it, it can be, <laughs> it can go yeah. up and up and up with salt water. But I would just say, um, yeah, talk to, talk to somebody that's trying it, give it a go, give it a real go, not just like a try it once. Oh, it didn't work the first time. You've got to try it, try something at least three times before you can decide you really don't like it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's great advice. Uh, is is there anything else that you would like to add to the conversation before we wrap it up? Oh, goodness. Just that um, thank you to anybody that's listening that has ever supported me in any way, whether it's, um, you know, buying jewelry from me that I was selling here locally when I really needed, needed you know, the money or buying artwork from me or liking a post, subscribing to my channel, all of those things. Um, I want to thank East Coast Sports. They've been a huge help, you know, supporter of me over the last year, uh, all the way from the start when I was getting fishing advice from Jerry, you know, who, who works there all the time. And um, now I'm on their billboards up here in town, which is just like, oh, what? That's so <laughs> crazy. I'll drive past myself. I'm like, that's so weird, you know, <laughs> but it's... <laughs> It's uh, it gives you like a warm, warm fuzzies inside to think that it's just so cool how life can change on a dime for bad or for good. Uh, okay. And I'm just tickled and I just want to, yeah, and oh, thank Jeff Wenzel who took those pictures that are up on there. And he's been a really big supporter of, um, of, of mine as well. And so just that uh, I'm just so thankful and grateful for the opportunities that I've had. <laughs> in the last year and all of the positive feedback like I cannot believe that I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers and I just started my channel a year ago and so it's just like it's just so crazy that taking that jump of like I don't know if people are gonna like this and what is that rejection going to feel like um, and then experiencing the opposite of that has been just so so great and you know you get your negative comments but you know there are few yeah, there are few far about them. oh i'm not worried about it yeah <laughs> so just i guess just how grateful i am yeah well it's it's obvious uh, the type of person that you are it, it shines through in your videos in this video this interview uh i think uh there's big things coming your way and and I can't thank you enough for coming on and uh, having the conversation with me and and sharing a little bit about who you are and why you are that person. So it means a lot to me. Thank well, you so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. Maybe we can fish together sometime. I, I'd love to, especially if you get on a big drum in the surf. That's on my bucket list is oh, a, a okay. big drum in the surf. I swapped my mono out for the braid yesterday. So I've got braid on it now. Oh my goodness! I'll have to post that. It'll, I'll post it as a reel or so, like a Facebook reel or something, like a short, because that footage is. I haven't. I still haven't watched the footage yet. I haven't been able to bring myself to watch the footage, y'all. I lost like a thirty-six inch red drum in the surf because my mono snapped from. I think it was from when I was catching those Spanish mackerel. My mono got dinged up. So bye bye mono. Yeah. Uh <laughs> You know, everyone needs the stories like that. That's lessons learned. So that's that's right. a part of it. All right. Well, we're going to wrap right. her up. Thank you so much. Bye. And I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye.